In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a blog post in Squarespace 7.0. So first, I'm actually going to go back to the login screen. So first, you're going to go to squarespace.com. Then it's going to show you your dashboard. And here on the left, you can see these are all the various websites that I have access to. Most of them I've created. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to use my own website as an example today. So once I've clicked in, I'm going to have a new dashboard, and these are all of the tools and settings for this website. So um, you can see this is the home page. I have a bunch of pop-ups on here, so just disregard those for now. Um, so I'm going to click on Pages. And uh, the way that Squarespace is organized is this is um, the menu that shows all the different pages you have in your top navigation right here. It says Primary Navigation. And this is an index which drops down. Um, so I'm going to minimize these so that you can kind of just see the core bread and butter of what I'm working with here. But so this is the primary navigation. So this refers to everything that you see up here in the top nav. Um, so you can see branding services about portfolio, resources, packages, and then when we get here, we're at blog. So I'm going to click on blog. And you can see here on the left, these are all my different blog posts. And if I keep scrolling, they go all the way down, all the way back to um, a few years ago. So uh, I'm going to show you how to create a new blog post. So you're going to click on this plus sign. And this is going to pull up the post editor. I'm not sure if that's the official name, but that's what we're going to call it. So for today's post, I'm going to say how to create a new blog post in Squarespace 7.0. By the way, I mentioned 7.0 because that's the version of Squarespace that I prefer to work with. Squarespace came out with version 7.1, which was supposed to be more user-friendly and easier for people, but honestly, it took away a lot of the controls that, for me as a designer, were very important and very useful tools. And I think that's kind of been the general consensus, is that people who are familiar with Squarespace and have been using it for a number of years are leaning towards preferring the old version as opposed to the new one. So if you're signing up for the first time, that is something to consider. Anyway, um, so yeah, I entered my title here and now this is going to be the body of the post. So as you can see, the way that Squarespace works is if you roll over something, these little menus pop up. So if I were to just click here, I can just type. This is like a normal word processor. Um, if I want to add an image, I'm going to click on this, and then this brings up uh, this new menu, of, and these are all the different types of things that you can add to Squarespace. By the way, this works the same way if you're editing any page on your website as it does if you're editing a blog post. So, um, you know, this is just the general functionality of how everything works in Squarespace 7.0. So you can add, choose from all of these different things. Um, some of these I haven't even actually used. It's got integrations, um, but for now, let's try to keep it a little bit simple for this one. So let's just add an image. So click image, and then this is gonna pop up. So here you've got another little menu. You can click on add an image, and here you have more options. You can either upload a file, which is probably what you'll do. Um, so I'll show that one first. So I'm just gonna go to my Dropbox and find an image, let's go for this picture of me, no problem. So that's gonna go ahead and upload, and then you can choose to have the caption off, below, overlay on hover. You have all kinds of different settings. If you wanted this image to link to something else, like another website or you know anywhere else on the web, you could put that link there, but I'm not gonna do that for now. You even have options, once you click on that, if you want the link to open in a new tab or a new window, you can toggle that on. Again, getting a little bit more complicated than I'd like for today, so I'm gonna just keep it simple. So now you have this text. Um, I'm gonna show you a little bit more on how to use the text editor. So I'll type a real sentence here. And you can see um, you've got tools here. So you can either make it bold, make it italic, you could also add a link to this text that pops up. You put the link there, same um, tools, and then you would hit apply. You can adjust your um, the position of your typography, so center, left, right, or justified. 
and then you also have the option to do bullets or numbers, um, kind of all the same things that you would see in any other normal word processor such as Microsoft Word. Um, I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff because this looks crazy. Um, this is actually probably the most important thing that you'll use more often than not. Here you can see normal. So the way that Squarespace works, you have um, you, you have a style editor, so everything is consistent throughout. So they don't want the website to just be like a mess, and they also don't want you to have to go through every single time you use a header and tell them what font and what size and what color. So it's like a universal styling tool. So again, so since I've most likely set up your website if you're watching this video, um, that's all already been set up for you, so you don't have to worry about messing with that, but I just want you under to understand how it works. So these have already been preset by the style editor. So if I click heading one, this is gonna look like how all the other heading ones on my website look. Same for heading two, heading three. You can see this one styled quite a bit differently. Um, or normal, this is how all the body text on my website appears. Um, and then code, don't worry about that. We're not gonna get into that today. So I'm gonna go with heading one and I'm gonna make it centered. And then um, I'm gonna, you know, this is, let's say this is my title, this is the image. And then I'm gonna wanna add some more text down here and this will be the body of my post. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign again. This again pops up and I can click on text. And then I can go ahead and um, write my, my body here. Again, if you want to uh, say, you know, here is a link to buy, you know, let's say a product, visit, and then, you know, you can have it, or you could even just say like, click here, highlight this text, click there. Now you can do, let's just for fun do amazon.com since I am a fan and an affiliate, and then that's it. So that's essentially how you do it. Now you might be wondering, um, you know, what if I don't want the text underneath the photo? What if I want it to be to the side? Great question. So Squarespace is a, it's kind of on a grid and it's really like a drag around situation. Um, so all I would have to do is hover over this until that little hand comes up, click down, and then I can actually move this around. So I can move the text to the right and I can do this you know, as many times as I want. If I put it back here, it's gonna make the photo expand. If I move the image by itself, now it's over here. Um, so that's basically how that works. And if I, it's, it's a little bit funky and a little bit tricky when you first are using it. It took me a little while to get used to it, but once you get used to it, it's honestly a piece of cake. So my advice is just would really be to play around with it, mess around with it. Um, and you'll get the hang of it. It's really not that hard. So once you have your post all set up here, um, and again, I'll just show you quickly. You can, there's so many different things you can add. And again, I, I recommend you just playing around with this. If you wanted to add, um, let's do like an Instagram integration. This will actually pull from my Instagram page, which is pretty cool. I can choose how many items show up this you know shows my Instagram account um, if I go over here to design these are different ways that you can showcase things like this so this would be like a slideshow the other posts are down here this is a carousel um, I usually go with the grid option for something like this um, and then if you go still over here on design you can adjust the padding around the images so this would make them touch each other or make them very close together um, and you know there's just Honestly, there's so many options, there's so many things you can do um, that there, that would be a tutorial for another day. But so that's how you set up the basic post. You know how to add the image, you know how to add the text, you know how to change the text so you can make it a title, and you know how to add links. So that should be the bread and butter of setting up any blog post. Now we have your options. So down here, this is a little bit more advanced, but it's pretty nice. If you wanna add tags, these are just, um, basically like keywords that it would be associated with, um, with the post. Uh, I don't really use that, but I do use these categories. So as you can see, these are all the different categories that I have blog posts um, that, talk, that uh, are topics of my blog posts. So for this one, this would be, let's call it Squarespace, perfect. 
And now you'll see, I'll show you in a minute um, how that's gonna work. So yeah, you can choose categories. You can do more than one. So I can do branding as well if I want. Comments, this is a personal choice. You can either have them on or off. I typically like to have them on because I like for people to engage with my content. Um, if I also like to get feedback if somebody has a question or, or they're confused, I like to know so that I can improve upon it. And then over here, this is very important. Uh, you can select the status of the post. So published means it's live and on your website. Scheduled means um, you can choose to publish it later. So say for whatever reason, if you wanna always make sure that your blog posts get published at the same time each week or something like that, you would use that scheduling option. Needs review is basically just a note for yourself or if you have a team that this blog post is probably you know ready to be published but you wanna have Say you want to have uh, you know another set of eyes look at it. You could use that um, status, or draft just means you're working on it. So I'm going to hit published to show you guys, and then uh, once I'm done with everything, I'm going to hit save. But before I do that, I want to go up here and talk about this menu, which is a whole other thing. So you've got content, which is where we've been. If you click on options, this is cool. So you've got the post URL. So here, you can choose a specific URL for your post, and I highly recommend doing this for SEO purposes. This actually does matter. It also makes it a lot easier, not only for people to find this post, but for you, if you wanna, a lot of times, like if I'm talking to a client and I wanna send them a blog post I did because they asked a question where I'm answering the question in the blog post, I can easily just search Gretchen Camp and then you know a few keywords of what the blog post is about and this is one of the ways that makes it really really easy for search engines to find it and again like I said this is great for SEO so for this one I'm going to call it how and you're going to want to put dashes in between words so that it can be read so um, the URL for this one I'm going to do how to um, create blog post Squarespace okay Author, this is also cool. If you have multiple contributors on your site, you can change the author so people know who created the post. Um, source URL, I really wouldn't worry about that. Uh, it's, it describes it here if you are curious. Um, but then this is also great. I love the featured image. So I like to use this. As you can see, if you actually look at my blog back here, it's grayed out in the background. You can see that I always create a graphic for each blog post cover with the title of the blog post in a big, bold font that's easy to read with usually a photo of myself. So um, I'm gonna upload one of these. Just go to, let's see, blog 2022, blog post cover images. Don't worry about how my files are organized. That's a whole separate thing. So this is a good one. So I'm gonna just do, as an example, upload that. Now, the last thing, and you're definitely gonna wanna do this, would be to include an excerpt. So I usually just do a sentence or two, and then this will appear on your blog page. So not on the page for the individual post, which is separate, but on the page for the blog as a whole, it'll show up right here, assuming you have that, you know, those settings to show the excerpt. You can toggle that on or off, but I, I like to have it on. So you write the excerpt here in this quick five minute video tutorial. I'll show you how to create a new blog post in Squarespace version 7.0. Okay, so now you can also decide whether or not you want it to be a featured post. That's a separate thing. We can talk about that later. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You've got the content set up, the option set up. I personally do not mess with any of these other four things. If you put the URL the way that I said, and assuming you have you know, your keywords on what the blog post is about within your excerpt and also within the, you know, the body of the post, you don't need to worry about SEO. It's all built in. It's gonna just be taken care of for you. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna hit save and you'll see, this is now gonna pop up. As you can see, this got styled a little bit crazy because of my, um, my styling. Like this is my header three, which I use not very often, but that's what it looks like throughout my website. So, but you can see, so here's the post. It now appears over here at the top where you can either delete it with one click. You wanna be careful of that. Um, 
and I also do recommend, uh, I actually don't recommend writing your posts in Squarespace just because, because occasionally there will be an issue where their website times out and if you, or like say you accidentally hit that delete without meaning to, um, I typically recommend writing my writing your posts in a separate word processing program, even if it's just like notes or pages or Microsoft Word, and then copy pasting them into here just so you don't lose your work. Uh, but that's just kind of common sense. So here's the new post. Um, so now I have two options if I want to make edits to this. So I can, again, I can go back and I can click edit and it will pop up with this editor again. But what I prefer to do usually personally, and again, this is just kind of a personal preference, is I like to be on this page and then click edit here because it just gives you a more realistic view of what your post is actually going to look like, mainly because of the text styling, like I said. So this is, you know, I've got this right now is on heading one. Um, this is what it's going to actually look like on my real site uh, is like that's my heading two and that's my heading three. So I prefer personally to kind of edit in this mode. Um, and that is pretty much it. And from here, if I want to go back to that other editor, I can click on settings and it'll take me right back to that same thing. So that is all. I hope this was helpful. And please, as always, let me know if you have any questions or if there's any confusion. And yeah, that's it.